Let us now talk about relationships. Let it be said that you have nothing to learn about relationships. You have only to demonstrate what you already know. There is a way to be happy in relationships, and that is to use relationships for their intended purpose. Relationships are constantly challenging, constantly calling you to create, express, and experience higher and higher aspects of yourself, grander and grander visions of yourself, even more magnificent versions of yourself. Nowhere can you do this more immediately, impactfully, and immaculately than in relationships. And in fact, without relationships, you cannot do it at all. It is only through your relationship with others, people, places, and events that you can even exist in the universe. Remember, absent everything else, you are not. You only are what you are relative to another thing. That is how it is in the world of the relative, as opposed to the world of the absolute, where I reside. Once you clearly understand this, once you deeply grasp it, then you intuitively bless each and every experience, all human encounters, and especially personal human relationships. For you see them as constructive in the highest sense. You see that they can be used, must be used, are being used to construct who you really are. That construction can be a magnificent creation of your own conscious design or a strictly happenstance configuration. You can choose to be a person who has resulted simply from what has happened or from what you've chosen to be and do about what has happened. It is in the latter form that creation of self becomes conscious. It is in the second experience that self becomes realized. Bless, therefore, every relationship and hold each as special and formulative of who you are and now choose to be. When human love relationships fail, they fail because they were entered into for the wrong reason. Most people enter into relationships with an eye toward what they can get out of them rather than what they can put into them. The purpose of a relationship is to decide what part of yourself you'd like to see show up, not what part of another you can capture and hold down. There can only be one purpose for a relationship and for all life, to be and to decide who you really are. It is very romantic to say you were nothing until the special other came along. But it is not true. Worse, it puts an incredible pressure on the other to be all sorts of things they are not. Not wanting to let you down, they try very hard to be and do these things until they cannot anymore. They can no longer complete your picture of them. They can no longer fill the roles to which they have been assigned. Resentments build, anger follows. Finally, in order to save themselves, these special others begin to reclaim their real selves, acting more in accordance with who they really are. It is about this time that you say they've really changed. It is very romantic to say that now that your special someone has entered your life, you feel complete. Yet the purpose of relationship is not to have another who might complete you, but to have another with whom you might share your completeness. Here is the paradox of all human relationships. You have no need for a particular other in order for you to experience fully who you are and without another, you are nothing. This is both the mystery and the wonder, the frustration and the joy of the human experience. It requires deep understanding and total willingness to live within this paradox in a way which makes sense. I observe that very few people do. The problem is so basic, so simple, and yet so tragically misunderstood. Your grandest dream, your highest idea, and your fondest hope has had to do with your beloved other, rather than your beloved self. The test of your relationships has had to do with how well the other has lived up to your ideas, and how well you saw yourself living up to theirs. Yet the only true test has to do with how well you lived up to yours. 
Relationships are sacred because they provide life's greatest opportunity, indeed its only opportunity, to create and produce the experience of your highest conceptualization of self. Relationships fail when you see them as life's grandest opportunity to create and produce the experience of your highest conceptualization of another. Let each person in relationship worry about self. What self is being, doing, and having? What self is wanting, asking, and giving? What self is seeking, creating, and experiencing? And all relationships would magnificently serve their purpose and their participants. Let each person in relationship worry not about the other, but only, only, only about self. This seems a strange teaching, for you have been told that in the highest forms of relationship, one worries only about the other. Yet I tell you this, your focus upon the other, your obsession with the other, is what causes relationships to fail. What is the other being? What is the other doing? What is the other having? What is the other saying, wanting, demanding? What is the other thinking, expecting, planning? The master understands that it doesn't matter what the other is being, doing, having, saying, wanting, demanding. It doesn't matter what the other is thinking, expecting, planning. It only matters what you are being in relationship to that. The most loving person is a person who is self-centered. This is not a radical teaching, not if you look at it carefully. If you cannot love yourself, you cannot love another. Many people make the mistake of seeking love of self through love for another. Of course, they don't realize they are doing this. It's not a conscious effort. It's what's going on in the mind, deep in the mind, in what you call the subconscious. They think, if I can just love others, they will love me. Then I will be lovable and I can love me. The reverse of this is that so many people hate themselves because they feel that there is not another who loves them. This is a sickness. It's when people are truly lovesick. Because the truth is, other people do love them. But it doesn't matter. No matter how many people profess their love for them, it is not enough. First, they don't believe you. They think you are trying to manipulate them. Trying to get something. They sit around trying to figure out how anyone could actually love them. So they don't believe you and embark on a campaign to make you prove it. You have to prove that you love them. To do this, they may ask you to start altering your behavior. Second, if they finally come to a place where they can believe you love them, they begin to worry at once about how long they can keep your love. So, in order to hold on to your love, they start altering their behavior. Thus, two people literally lose themselves in a relationship. They get into the relationship hoping to find themselves, and they lose themselves instead. This losing of the self in a relationship is what causes most of the bitterness in such couplings. Two people join together in partnership, hoping that the whole will be greater than the sum of the parts, only to find that it's less. They feel less than when they were single, less capable, less able, less exciting, less attractive, less joyful, less content. This is because they are less. They've given up most of who they are in order to be and to stay in their relationship. Relationships were never meant to be this way. Yet this is how they are experienced by most people. It is because people have lost touch with the purpose of relationships. When you lose sight of each other as sacred souls on a sacred journey, then you cannot see the purpose, the reason, behind all relationships. The soul has come to the body, and the body to life for the purpose of evolution. You are evolving. You are becoming. And you are using your relationship with everything to decide what you are becoming. This is the job you came here to do. This is the joy of creating self, of knowing self, of becoming consciously what you wish to be. It is what is meant by being self-conscious. You have brought yourself to the relative world so that you might have the tools with which to know and experience who you really are. Who you are is who you create yourself to be in relationship to all the rest of it. Your personal relationships are the most important elements in this process. 
Your personal relationships are therefore holy ground. They have virtually nothing to do with the other. Yet because they involve another, they have everything to do with the other. This is the divine dichotomy. This is the closed circle. So it is not such a radical teaching to say, Blessed are the self-centered, for they shall know God. It might not be a bad goal in your life to know the highest part of yourself and stay centered in that. Your first relationship, therefore, must be with yourself. You must first learn to honor and cherish and love yourself. You must first see yourself as worthy before you can see another as worthy. You must first see yourself as blessed before you can see another as blessed. You must first know yourself to be holy before you can acknowledge holiness in another. If you put the cart before the horse, as most of your religions ask you to do, and acknowledge another as holy before you acknowledge yourself, you will one day resent it. If there is one thing none of you can tolerate, it is someone being holier than thou. Yet your religions force you to call others holier than thou, and so you do it for a while. Then you crucify them. You have crucified, in one way or another, all of my teachers, not just one. And you did so not because they were holier than thou, but because you made them out to be. My teachers have all come with the same message, not I am holier than thou, but you are as holy as I am. This is the message you have not been able to hear. This is the truth you have not been able to accept. And that is why you can never truly, purely fall in love with another. You have never truly, purely fallen in love with yourself. And so I tell you this, be now and forevermore centered upon yourself. Look to see what you are being, doing, and having in any given moment. Not what's going on with another. It is not in the action of another, but in your reaction that your salvation will be found.